This video will explain multi-site. Modeling realistic citations requires moving beyond the single sentence, single label setting. Here's a quick overview of this presentation. We start off by defining the task of citation context analysis. This is a subset of the different tasks you can imagine for scientific literature mining. We're trying to perform supervised learning tasks on scientific papers. So we have these data sets of scientific papers like this one, and the way that you write scientific papers is you cite other papers. So describe how uh, citations, they preemptively answer questions. So you're uh, wondering what is the background of this area of research? Who's tried something like the, a similar idea before? What are the key uh, distinctions between this new paper and the, these previous papers and previous algorithms? So you cite the papers and the citations provide a lot of context and a lot of uh, question answers for these uh, scientific papers. So it's a very interesting uh, task for this overall framework of thinking about building scientific literature mining systems and applying deep learning and natural language processing to data sets made up of scientific papers for things like maybe it's uh, biomedical, maybe it's clinical trials, collections of these reviews, or maybe it's just deep learning papers as we'll study in this paper with uh, reviewing papers on natural language processing. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about the, this idea of building these meta tools for deep learning research, paper mining, deep papers about paper mining, this kind of idea with these natural language processing tools and these tools that generally for some background, this is about this uh, semantic scholar platform and a lot of really exciting papers. We'll go through a little list of uh, things like TLDR, extreme summarization of scientific papers, uh, all these data sets that they've been releasing, really exciting research around this task of scientific literature mining. So then we'll get into the uh, how they build this data set, this multi-site data set. Uh, they show off their software engineering skills on building this uh, annotation interface, how they employ uh, graduate students to uh, label these citations, a very interesting effort to construct this data set. Then we'll look at some results and then uh, results of treating this as a question answering problem and deploying the uh, long former transformer architecture. I was also using this uh, Casper, Casper with a Q. A paper for also a similar problem of scientific literature mining and then ending with some tools on these meta scientific literature mining papers that I think are one of the most interesting ideas in deep learning research and I really enjoy following uh, this line of research around these different problems in the scientific literature mining domain. This paper is looking at the supervised learning task of citation context analysis where we want to preemptively respond to questions about research like where has a fact been previously shown as an example of why you might cite another paper to add some context to what you're writing in your current paper, what technique is being used in the paper you might cite, uh, say you're using the SimClear algorithm and you're, uh, the paper is about deploying it on some other data set and you just cite the SimClear paper to illustrate what technique is being used. This is an example of a citation context that, you would, that would add more information about the paper and then also to construct and justify arguments about the correctness of the claims of the work. So this idea of overall building this framework, this context tree and this graph of how all these papers relate to each other is for building up the argument for the current scientific paper. So as some background, this research domain of scientific literature mining and platforms like the Semantic Scholar Engine and the S2ORC uh, way of scraping these papers and then constructing them into data sets is a really interesting and booming area of research. And I highly recommend checking out these papers because it seems like something interesting will come out of this. So we have papers like CyBERT and BioBERT, which are basically the idea of take the BERT model and then train it on scientific papers instead of Wikipedia and books are, and the things that G BERT and GPT are usually trained on. Uh, CORD19 is a data set of all papers relevant to COVID-19. So it's a collection of say 240,000 of these papers and that's an uh, insane amount of papers if you've looked through the data set. So it's a crazy amount of papers. They have all these other data sets like this. They have the MS2 medical summarization data set and then this one uh, factor fiction verifying scientific claims. Similar to this citation context analysis, they're adapting this problem of fact verification with data sets like Fever where as the input you're given a claim evidence pair and you classify this pairwise relationship between a claim and then the evidence into categories like supports, refutes, or not enough information. So that's the task of fact verification. And this is about applying it to scientific papers and annotating data to train systems with supervised learning. A TLDR, abstractive summarization, using the open review platform for uh, I think the ICLR conference in machine learning, where the authors have to write a quick one-line TLDR of their paper as they submit it on this platform. So they use that platform to bootstrap data to build this data set and then train models to summarize machine learning papers. And this is a review on what people have been doing with this CORD19 data set. So overall, I highly recommend just expanding the tree of looking at the authors of this paper and these other papers and just seeing what they're coming up with because it seems like there's so much interesting research in scientific literature mining and a very interesting application that can facilitate research in this kind of meta recursive of improving the way that we're doing deep learning research.
Returning to this task of citation, context, analysis, and after looking at this table, we'll see some examples of different citations and what we mean by the intent of these citations and what kinds of questions they uh, answer about the paper that they are included in. So previous work in citation context analysis has generally focused on single sentence, single intent classification. So here's a table of some previous papers that have focused on this problem and what they're trying to do with the problem, what the size of their data set is, and then what they're using as the context. How much are they using around the uh, citation? Is it just what they call the citance in one of the other papers, which is the sentence with the citation in it, in order to classify the uh, citation or are they using these longer windows which is what is explored in this paper and again this idea of long-range transformers efficient transformers that could attend over these long sequences so you have more context for understanding the citation in the scientific paper and then generally focusing on single labels for citations even though they may have uh, more of a dynamic uh, assignment in a classification task so here's an example of where including multiple sentences and having a longer context of describing a citation will help to infer what the label would be. So we start off with Galozo et al. succeeded eliminating this requirement by using the category name alone as the initial keyword, yet obtaining superior performance within the keyword-based approach. So this looks like it would be labeled as background and just kind of beginning to have be the background of the paper. And then the goal of our research is to further improve the scheme of text categorization from category name, which is hardly explored in prior work. So this is the motivation. So it's showing how this uh, citation, this idea of background and motivation, it's kind of a fuzzy thing of distinguishing between the two, but background kind of being like this historical timeline, maybe where motivation is more so uh, what is the problem being addressed maybe like how this paper the problem the motivation is this idea of citation context analysis and the background would be here are some of these previous approaches like going through this table maybe some idea like this but this kind of idea of understanding uh, what these citations are about and how having longer context helps to get a better sense of what's going on so then this next idea is where you would have multiple labels so in this citation, in our experiments, we use the same definition of structural locality as was proposed for the ISBN dependency parser in Tito and Henderson 2007. So this is both similarities to the current algorithms and saying uses. So we use the same definition. This is inter interesting because you might uh, be parsing these papers to see what algorithms are being uh, tested. So say it's some paper uh, where you're modeling some new data set and you want to parse which previous algorithms are being used. And so you have this uh, label of we use the same definition. This is kind of like the algorithms is being used. But th so that's one idea of a citation where it would have multiple of these labels. So then here's an example, multiple sentence, multi-label. Results table one compares the published BERT based results from Devlin et al. 2019 to a re-implementation with either static or dynamic masking. We find that our re-implementation with static masking performs similar to the original BERT model and dynamic masking is comparable or slightly better than static masking. So this is an example, you have a longer context, you have two sentences and you'd say that they've used this technique and they have similarities and differences as they've done this dynamic masking, this new strategy. So I think this is maybe a quote from the span BERT paper where they're extending this mass language modeling from the BERT model. So they use the BERT idea and then they have similarities and differences with it's a comparison is what the citation is. The intent of the citation is to compare this model with the past work that is in this history of whatever problem they're doing. So in order to address multi-sentence, multi-intent classification for citations, they're developing the multi-site data set. And this is a really interesting detail of this paper is how they construct this data set. So overall, what they end up with is about 12,600 citation contexts extracted from 1,200 NLP papers. And I love this meta idea of uh, NLP systems mining papers about NLP. So they end up with 4,500 intents per each of these uh, publications overall. Oh, the, and those are the intent labels. Sorry. So we have this. These are how many uh, sentences, how many overall context windows, and these are how many intents are labeled for each of the 1200 NLP papers. So here's the interesting detail as well as the details of the statistics of it, but the annotation effort is really interesting. So they hire nine graduate students who are studying natural language processing recruited from the Upwork freelancer platform, and they're paying them between $25 to $35 an hour. They annotate 20 papers at a time with manual annotation review after each batch for quality control from the authors of the paper. And here's the uh, interface that they built. So first there, uh, I think they have to identify the citation context and then label it into one of these categories. So a citation in an NLP paper could be about background, and then here's the description if you wanna break this down and further understand the difference between background, motivation, uses, extends a previous paper, similarities, differences, future work. Very interesting, this idea. You can imagine just only classifying ideas for future work to help you come up with ideas for research, maybe these kinds of ideas, but in this overall context of uh, understanding citations and scientific papers. And here's the part that I think is really interesting. So 
they build this interface for annotating the annotating data sets. And I think it's important to as researchers to have these kinds of tools to annotate data and use this crowdsourcing uh, crowdsource labeling effort. So here's what their uh, labeling interface looks like where you click on a uh, potential site. Uh, I think what they do is they break each sentence into this list and then you would click say 1920 and then label that multi-sentence uh, context into one of the intent labels. So a very interesting framework for how they build this data set, th how they uh, employ students to label it, and then how they construct this interface to facilitate the labeling and use the software engineering skills for deep learning research. In addition to training supervised learning models to predict this multi-label classification task, the authors also formulate this as uh, question answering with a natural language input, for the end of this prompt with yes or no. So does the paper cite, and then you insert the citation, or yeah, citation B in this context A for background information. So this is the prompt that's used to guide the question answering. So they use this uh, Casper model to model this. It's built around this long former idea. Yana Kilcher has a really great video that explains the long former. It's a similar to this long short transformer idea, some strategy to combine uh, strided attention features with compressed low rank projections and this idea of achieving efficient transformers that can attend over these long input sequences. You might want to say input this entire paragraph to help inform the intent of say this 11 citation or this word to vec citation having longer context in these long range efficient transformers. This scientific literature mining domain seems like a very interesting uh, application of these efficient transformers and attending over more than 512 tokens. So here are the results of applying this model with this task of uh, saying yes or no, does this paper cite be for background information. Following along with these advances in scientific literature mining has been one of my favorite topics of deep learning and I love seeing a new advancement come out from uh, these researchers building these platforms around Semantic Scholar and all these different applications. So I really like this idea of improving on the tools that we use to do science and deep learning. There's also these ideas of say ML Ops where it's the tools for training tons of models, distributed training and uh, continual learning, all these different factors of it, and then the active learning, all these different approaches to really the deep learning models, particularly the deep learning models. Then I also like things like Codex where we're building models that can help us write code. We have this Keras Code Examples repository where we have these examples of how to write uh, Keras code to implement these deep learning papers and maybe, maybe there could be some intersection where this can help us just quickly prototype type ideas by using these using the models that we're trying to build to help with the deep learning research and then these literature mining tools I think like kind of what I'm trying to do with the Henry Labs and curating these papers and communicating them quickly and then also uh, this is where this account on Twitter AK92501 is where I get most of these papers from and then archive insights these ways of how you collect these papers and then maybe automatic tools that could do question answering from these papers or do abstractive summarization TLDR get out the salient information in a more efficient way and overall these, this idea of building these literature mining tools is something that I think will be really impactful and a really interesting application for natural language processing to improve the way that we study natural language processing. Thank you so much for watching this overview of Multi-Cite, a paper studying this problem of citation context analysis, a sub-problem of the task of scientific literature mining and scientific paper analysis, another uh, paper in this really interesting chain of research around applying these natural language processing tools into data sets made up of scientific uh, papers, whether those are biomedical papers or natural language processing papers and so on, a really exciting area of research. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Thank you.